Welcome to another episode of Peralta Matters. I am your host, Jay Calhoun. This episode will be focusing on Peralta health and wellness. So sit back, relax, and let's get into what matters here at Peralta. I'm Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Join me in watching Peralta TV. Welcome back to Peralta Matters. I'm glad now to be joined by Indra Thadini, Director of Peralta Wellness. Indra, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Excellent. Happy to be here. Let's talk a little bit about your Peralta background. Okay. Um, first starting with being the school nurse. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that and for how long. Well, I started in June of 1999. Mm. I was hired by Dean Shimabukuro uh -huh. at the time, who was a avid football supporter yes, he is. and I started providing health services to Laney students Excellent. and soon after I was hired as a tenured faculty I joined the Health Services Association for mm -hmm. California Community Colleges. Which you're interim president right now. I exactly. Believe, yeah. I'm the um, president-elect. President-elect, excuse so me. So you've done your background. I tried, I tried. <laughs> So I joined the organization and I would go to the annual conferences mm -hmm. and would be so impressed with what other colleges mm -hmm. in the community college system mm -hmm. were doing. Hmm. And so the nurse up at Merritt and mm -hmm. I tried very hard for many years to try to get the health fee passed so we could provide right. more services. Right. And for example, at that time when I was hired in 1999, San Francisco City College had 10 mental health professionals. Hmm. We had none. Wow. Yes, wow. at Laney. We, um, we did have the mental health nurse mm -hmm. up at Merritt, mm -hmm. but nobody at Laney. Right. And, and on a day-to-day -day basis, I would see mm -hmm. these mental health issues that were going unaddressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could provide support, but that was really right. out of my, right. my professional right. experience. And then so nursing into uh, director of Peralta Wellness. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the Peralta Wellness Initiative. So um, probably around 2002, mm -hmm. uh, we, the nurse and I, we were meeting with deans mm -hmm. and administrators, and it was not until we got the support of Linda Handy, Trustee Handy, mm -hmm. okay. um, who really was concerned about mm -hmm. student health services, mm -hmm. and also Trustee Nikki Gonzalez Wynn mm -hmm. and um, Abel. Um, joined forces right. and at that time there was kind of this synergy because the deputy director of Alameda County mm -hmm. Health Services talked to our then chancellor okay. and so he was working at that level and we were working at another level right. and it kind of came together Excellent. and it was the prime time to provide more health services mm -hmm. for all the four colleges mm -hmm. and so the health fee was initiated mm -hmm. in April 2010 mm -hmm. And we began in my space, or the space that I'm at in right. the tower, to we hired Asian Health Services to provide doctor services gotcha. in, okay. in October 2010. Okay. So they are under the umbrella of the Peralta Wellness and Science. Absolutely, Excellent. yes, yes. So, I mean, we, we kind of talked about it based mm -hmm. on with the, the hiring of the doctors, but mm -hmm. talk a little bit about mm -hmm. the services that the mm -hmm. wellness centers actually provide right. to the students. Sure. So the doctor is there Monday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. 9 to 5. Mm -hmm and about 50% of the visits are family planning. Hmm. And as you know, we have hmm. most of our population around 18 to 24, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes children are having children yes. and unable to care for them. And so family planning is actually a very important uh, social public health yeah. initiative. And we're addressing that at and the community college level. Exactly, right exactly. Okay. And then sexually transmitted illnesses mm -hmm. are screened and treated mm -hmm. on those Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. We also send out specimens for labs. If a student has a sore throat, it might be strep throat, and mm. we have to send out a diagnostic okay. before we put them on antibiotics. We do TB skin testing, mm -hmm. and then we have mental health services Monday through Friday, wow. 9 to 5. Wow. Yes. And these are, again, thoroughly accessible to all the students, and these are provided for yes. and primarily the students. Yes. Yeah. However, 
last semester I looked at a hundred surveys mm -hmm. of the where the students are coming from uh -huh. and 50 percent were actually pure Laney students hmm. and then another 30 percent were Laney plus another college okay. so they were dual enrolled Enroll, right. and then only 20 percent were actually coming from the other colleges so we probably need to relook at this system mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we want the students to access care. Mm -hmm. And if they're having a difficult time getting to Laney, then we mm -hmm. want to address that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But at least we're starting to build the infrastructure, right. as you had said Correct. earlier. Correct. Yes. You've been here a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the, the results you've seen, the mm -hmm. emphasis on actually having a wellness and a health center on campus providing for these students? What is it actually benefiting them on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, um, just as I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. that when a student has a headache mm -hmm. or has a backache mm -hmm. or has any kind of pain in their body, mm -hmm. it really prevents them from right. coming to class number one and then focusing on class number two. Right. And then if they have to go to a provider through a system that's disorganized, mm -hmm many times Medi-Cal mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and so they're spending a lot more time trying to find a health care provider, a right. doctor to write right. a prescription right. for a medication or to get care, and the time for transportation is cut down by having the health center right there, mm -hmm. and they're able to be more successful in what we're trying to achieve mm -hmm. together right. is getting them educated and getting them to be happy, healthy members of our community and society. That's excellent. We talked a little off camera about um, dealing directly with some of the scholars, the, the student athletes rather. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you know, we know student athletes go through injuries, they mm -hmm. have their own doctors and all that. Mm -hmm. But there's also this other facet of it, the mm -hmm. student portion, mm -hmm. you know. And talk a little bit about, especially dealing with the football team and baseball mm -hmm. teams, mm -hmm. how you're, you know, nurturing that mm -hmm. side of their, oh, of, yes. their, of their wellness and uh -huh. health, so yes. to speak. So I, I did take over for the head football coach of many years, Stan Peters, Coach Peters. Right. And I teach a three-unit health course called Exploring Health Issues. Hmm. And so in this course, they not only learn about the, the common health issues like nutrition and exercise. Right. Right. Um, and mental health, and they learn about addictions. Mm. And uh, two of them that um, came up last semester that have I've seen in previous semesters, mm -hmm. marijuana mm -hmm. and sex, hmm. uh, pornography. Okay. And so um, with the marijuana issue, uh, I met with some students individually mm -hmm. and also met with the team to just talk about about um, how they can be healthier. Mm -hmm. And and I use a lot of football analogies. I said, you know, how can you be successful on the team as well as be successful in the classroom? Right. And I said, when you don't get the book, is that dropping the pass? Hmm. And they go, oh yeah. yeah. And when you don't do your homework, is that fumbling the ball? And they said, yeah. <laughs> and so I do create a lot of um, connection with them. Excellent. And, and um, some of them, still stay in touch with me when they get into the NFL. Right, we just <laughs> talked about that. Shout out to Frank Summers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, within the Laney campuses, because this is the primarily only spot where there is a full service mm -hmm. health center, mm -hmm. um, what have you seen could be something that should be added or something that could be explored even further? Hmm. Um, I'd like to see much more integration. Hmm. You know, I brought um, acupuncture to Laney College back in 2002 okay. because I ha was able to get some private grants through community health from UC Berkeley. Excellent. And then now we have a much more robust program because of the health fee and, and our budget. But we don't really have the acupuncture doctors and massage people talking with our Western doctors. Mm. And so I'd like to have a, and with the mental health people so gotcha. we could all collaborate. And there are some issues because we do outsource. Okay. Some many colleges, most colleges don't, oh. and so we're able to talk more about patients, or mm -hmm. they are able to talk more about patients than mm -hmm. we are because of organization, organization confidentiality issues. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that is something that that I'd like to explore, as well as really making an assessment of whether or not what we're doing is really the best 
that we can provide for our students. Mm. And that's going to mm. be my, my next goal. Right, right. Are there other services outside of the mental health um, mm -hmm. that really you know, guide or, or direct students in that social, environmental, mm -hmm. dealing with and coping with mechanisms that, you know, are definitely required? Well, I, I think later on we'll be talking with um, a, a new yoga um, meditation. Um, and we've actually tried meditation classes for students. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a non-violence faculty staff group that is dealing with some of the losses that we suffered during Christmas break. Mm -hmm. We had two students that were shot. Mm -hmm. And I've seen three students that have had members of their family either shot mm -hmm. or died. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not talking just about one or two, I'm talking about three to five. Wow. So it's, wow. it's really, really yeah. serious. Yeah. And we need to address the impact that this kind of environment has on our students. Mm -hmm. As we part, what would you say or what would be uh, <clears throat> something that not only our Peralta viewers but the community mm -hmm. needs to know about the Peralta mm -hmm. Wellness Center as well as the initiatives that you're putting through? Well, I would love for the community to know that, that we are trying to improve our community mm -hmm. at Peralta Colleges and at the Peralta Wellness Center and that their input um, is always welcome and for example we have the Peralta Wellness Fair coming up mm -hmm. and having community participation and mm -hmm. we do have American Red Cross and crisis support mm -hmm. of Alameda okay. County and uh, Alameda Food Bank wow. you, you probably won't believe how many students have hunger as an issue so That's we definitely need to partnership with uh, wow. many agencies community agencies right. I applaud you for your work thank well, you thank so much you. thanks for coming right. on the show absolutely All right. Take care. That was Indra Thadani. We'll be right back in a minute with Peralta Matters. I already had a bachelor's degree when I came to Laney. Five years later, I earned three associate degrees, majoring in biology, Spanish, and liberal arts, and was also named valedictorian. Laney College is a wonderful place for professionals seeking new careers or preparing for advanced studies. I have no pulse. We have great teachers who are not only experts in their field, but who genuinely care. I am Sarah Klimek. Laney works for me. Welcome back to Peralta Matters, where we're talking Peralta Wellness. I am now joined by ASLC Treasurer, John Michael Cox. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Right on, man. Let's first talk about um, the student perspective of why health and wellness is important on campus, in your opinion? Well, um, I think oftentimes students get sort of bogged down so much mm -hmm. with their work that then we forget to take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that impacts our quality of work. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty serious. Yeah. As a student government, you see kind of the, the best of both worlds, in my opinion. You see the, the administrative side of how government and student works and also you're dealing as a student you know dealing with your peers and your constituents talk about your experiences with them in the health and wellness aspects talking about some of the the health issues you just talked about you know they're not performing well you see some of your students falling off because they're not having these on different campuses or yeah um, I think I think one of the statistics the statistics that I learned was that 80 percent of students are dealing with alcohol or drug mm. addiction mm. Um, they're you know partying a lot and that impacts the, the mental health and, right. and work quality I think uh, I think that our, our understanding of wellness is sort of is you know is not well thought out hmm. or you know we're not being taught hmm. the whole scope of what wellness is I like that I like that speak a little bit about that you, you're meaning there's not enough information being disseminated to your peers that this is important not just for the longevity, but also for your grades right now. Yeah, um, I think it's like there's a lot of emphasis, emphasis on developing the mind mm -hmm. and like you know the whole that whole thing. Mm -hmm. But we forget that you know we're these multi-dimensional things, <laughs> right? And we need to take care of all, right. all those aspects of ourselves. Right. As student government, um, you guys put forth an initiative or or something to help counter these things we're talking about. What did you guys do? So we we uh, started thinking about 
how there aren't too many places for students to go to decompress. Mm. And and one of the uh, concepts that came out was providing yoga. Okay. Because okay. I don't know much about yoga, <laughs> but uh, I, I I hear that it, like it helps relieve right. a lot of things. Right. And so. Um, yeah, I wrote a proposal proposal with some uh, friends okay. for five hundred and sixty dollars, and we got it passed through the student government. Right on, right on. And it's providing basically yoga classes, yoga time for students in the day during the day. Yeah, so we're still putting putting together gotcha. like the the scope and the overview of okay. it, but it's gonna be if it, we already have the space des designated. It's uh, mm. C one hundred every Wednesday at five to six. Right on. So, so we're gonna have practitioners there helping people with postures and things right like that. Right on, right on. So what do you think or what has your research shown you that yoga can do or help students? Well, <laughs> I think uh, with flexibility, it can help with that and uh, stretching, relaxation mm -hmm. techniques. Mm -hmm. Definitely the mental aspect of studying and focusing in classes, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. As a student yourself um, and working with Indra Thadani, how are you seeing the impact of what she's doing on your on your peers? Um, well, I think she's a she's a very awesome uh, educator, mm -hmm. and she knows she knows about trauma. Mm -hmm. She's trauma informed. Mm -hmm. You know, she cares, and she is a, like a a representation of, of how to nurture students. She has that piece. Right on. So I'm I'm very happy to be working with her. Right. What did you see on the uh, uh, as as you guys are doing this initiative? Are you seeing any resistance or any kind of obstacles uh, getting it passed? I um I haven't really come face to face with too many obstacles, but there are a lot of concerns. Like there's some insurance concerns. Okay. And we still have to go meet with the president's office and the risk management office to make sure that we have all those things squared away. But um, I don't see why, you know, why administrators or why right. students wouldn't take advantage of a free weekly yoga service. Totally. That, that's hopefully, hopefully, uh, it's it'll be like completely cost like cost effective, mm -hmm. free, mm -hmm. so we don't have to pay for it. That's mm -hmm. what I'm hoping. Right. To uh, to spread this around to other campuses as well, or are you guys? Yeah, sure? it's like it, well, yeah, that would be the next level. Okay. But there's so much work to do, and right. I'm just really I'm like the member, you know. I'm not right. I'm not an expert in creating these kinds of programs mm -hmm. and or being a facilitator. Mm -hmm. and, but there's a lot of like leg leg work to do. I'm I'm more of like the dreamer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you said earlier you're running around campuses doing all the work. So yeah. like that's. That's definitely a position, trust me, that's definitely a position. Well, John, I thank you so much for what you're doing and thank you for the initiative and I think I might have to go take a yoga class or something. Oh yeah, Wednesdays, Wednesdays. five o'clock, C100. There we go, appreciate you for coming on the thank show. Thank you man. so much. Thank you. We'll be right back with Peralta Matters. Welcome back to Peralta Matters. We are now joined by Sean Kennedy, Health Outreach Intern at Laney College. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Outstanding. Before we get into your health internship mm -hmm. at Laney College, let's talk about your recent transplant from across <laughs> the East. What, uh, what brought you out here from New Jersey? I decided to take prerequisites for nursing. I figured it was time for a career change and thought, what better place to do it than California? <laughs> Aren't we lucky? Um, talk a little bit about that. You wanted to get into nursing. Um, what did you hear or what was your research giving you about the Peralta Colleges that would help you in your transition? Well, it was actually a little bit of a mistake that I ended up here. Ah. <laughs> um, being from New Jersey, mm -hmm. I didn't really know much about Oakland right. and I had a friend here, but um, I just Googled Community Colleges Oakland, mm -hmm. taking for granted that Oakland is a rather large city. Right, right. <laughs> uh, so I found Merritt College first okay. and um, ended up being a little bit too far away from it mm -hmm. where I landed. So mm -hmm. I came to Laney and found my way into anatomy and physiology here right instead. On. So, right yeah. so what, what, uh, how did you get your way to uh, Indra Thadini and the health services here at the, at the campus? Uh, being in a career transition, I didn't have much uh, or any really clinical experience and I needed some kind of internship or health work and so I came to her um, initially just to find out about volunteering okay. um, and 
she had a positioning position opening up in uh, January, hmm. so I started working for her. Yeah. So uh, to give some of the viewers a little bit more of a clear picture of not only the services provided, but where the service is provided, mm -hmm. tell us um, where you work out of and how your daily activities would go. Okay. So within the Peralta Wellness Center, there are two offices. There is um, in the student center on the fourth floor, okay. there is the Asian Health Services Run Wellness Center. Okay. There's a doctor there Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 to 5. Mm. They do HIV testing, um, mental health care, okay. a couple of other things. Right. Um, and then the second office is with Ms. Thadani, okay. and that is room 250 in the tower building. The tower building. And she right. does sort of more immediate care if you need, you know, Band-Aids. If okay. you're interested in nutritional counseling, she'll do that. There's no actual office or wellness center on the on the tower it's more the student center where the actual um, well there is there's is an exam room okay. Uh, okay that's part of our little section right. in 250 so she's got her office there's an exam gotcha. room and then there's also the acupuncture massage room so you're actually giving health services in the tower yes indeed. Right on, right yeah. on. Mm -hmm. we spoke a little off camera about um, the lunchtime or the or the student sit in at the quad mm -hmm. or the or the student center mm -hmm. um, one, tell me <clears throat> what that is and why that's necessary, and then your experience in it. Okay. <laughs> uh, so a large part of our job is to sit in, um, in the student center and mm -hmm. actually inform students of what it is that they're paying for and right. that they are paying. There is an $18 fee mm -hmm. every semester that students pay for, and sometimes they know, sometimes they don't. They don't really know what it is. It's just sort of this vague right. idea. Uh, so we are there to tell them what it is that's available, direct mm -hmm. them where to go, when, um, how to access the mm -hmm. things that they're already paying for. Mm -hmm. What is the, uh, <clears throat> the response or reaction to your <laughs> hosting and being available to share this information? Um, so if I seek out the students, <laughs> they, um, they will definitely, they're interested, you know, right. they are happy to know that they're supported, that there are these services available to them, um, especially in stress relief, stress right. relief and actually eye care. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if um, Ms. Thadani mentioned, but we right. give eye vouchers for huh. UC Berkeley. Um, so each student can come to us to get one of those and it's $17 for the eye exam and then $45 if you do need a prescription. And that's totally cheap compared to what I pay. <laughs> <laughs> um, discuss a, a little bit from a student standpoint the importance of health services not only at this campus as you've seen but you know at the, the other campuses in the Peralta Colleges. Um, well it is it's very difficult to do your work successfully if you are stressed out or you're sick or feel that you don't have anywhere to go to remedy those things. Mm -hmm. And so to have those available and to make students aware that they are available to them is definitely important. Right. And I, you know, as a student, feel very lucky to have those things available right. to me as well. <laughs> I also know a little bit about uh, some of the yoga that you've been doing, or <laughs> that you have done and you're, you're teaching now. Um, and hopefully we'll see you in the, the project with John Michael. Talk about, for me, your personal experience on how yoga can help aid in some of the things you just mentioned. Uh, so yoga for me was very, very transitional. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, it was sort of a timing thing. You know, gotcha. I found it with the right teacher at the right time. Um, but because you are linking mind and body, mm. it is really a very valuable tool mm. to get through any sort of stressful experience. Mm. Um, and the fact that it is movement related, you know, meditation right. is also fantastic. Right. Um, but I do find that getting those spaces out and getting the stress mm. out of each and every part of you mm is really helpful in continuing on with your day after you've had some had some, some stress right, or right. had a test or need to prepare for a test right, you know right. what would you say or what's your pitch to uh, your fellow students who need to know more about the health services provided mm, what do you mean you do a pitch every day, as you say, you outreach or you'll go yes, out and yes, search yes. them. What would you say to them if they're looking at you right now on camera? Ah, well, 
I can give you my presentation please, when I go into class. Please do. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. Uh, okay, so generally I ask how many students know that they pay an $18 mm -hmm. health fee. Right. Usually most people know, um, and then I ask what it is that it pays for. Mm -hmm. No idea. Dead silence. Right. Um, and so I explain to them that there are the two offices and that we give I vouchers. We also have um, a bunch of different pamphlets and resources mm -hmm. about um, things that they can access in the community if it's something we don't do. Um, mm -hmm. We have a list of dental resources mm -hmm. that are low cost or sliding scale. Mm -hmm. um, and a ton of other stuff. <laughs> why not, why not? Well, I thank you for what you're doing and thank you for continuing your work with Mr. Yeah. Donnie. We'll see you soon. Thank you for having me. Right, great. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Peralta Matters. Welcome back to Peralta Matters. I want to thank our guests for coming on the show. And for more information, please visit peralta.edu forward slash health services. Until the next time, Please do something that matters. TV programs that matter.